This is arguably the single most important machine in the world right now, technologically, economically, and geopolitically. Without it, the global economy would slow, the pace of technological advancement would stutter. They cost $200 million each, and of the 200 or so that exist today, just a handful are on US soil. What's more, successive US administrations have had to scramble to ensure that none are sold into China. And that's despite the fact that much of the early work on the technology originated in the US. This is a story about where physics meets business and has a massive impact on the world's economy. So how did the United States manage to miss out on this colossally important piece of tech? It's called an Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography, or EUV machine, and it produces the world's most advanced semiconductors. EUV technology is the only reason that we have iPhones that are as fast as they are, the reason that we have this AI revolution with chatbots and ChatGPT. The device has turned the only company that produces it, the Dutch firm ASML, into Europe's biggest technology firm. Lithography is how circuit patterns are engraved onto chips. This is a very, very important part of the process of making semiconductors. The scale of extreme ultraviolet lithography machines is mind-boggling. Each device is the size of a bus, but is designed to etch patterns onto chips that are billionths of a meter across. How they do so is a remarkable feat of engineering. A high-powered laser is fired at a tiny target of tin droplets about 50,000 times a second. That creates a plasma that emits extreme ultraviolet light, which has a wavelength of 13 and a half nanometers. This light doesn't occur naturally on Earth. In fact, it's absorbed by most materials, including air. So the whole process is conducted in a vacuum and a series of mirrors reflect and focus the EUV light. Each mirror is coated in layers of molybdenum and silicon and polished to a smoothness of less than one atom's thickness. That's important because any blemish reduces the quality of the chips being produced. Midway through this process, the EUV light is reflected by a reticle that contains the pattern of the circuits that are to be etched onto the chip. These are then reflected and focused even more to make the pattern even tinier before hitting the silicon wafer. Each wafer is etched with billions of such patterns. The problem was it's so difficult to do. The semiconductor industry is always racing to make things smaller and its ability to keep doing that helps the global economy keep growing. Now, some of the layers of materials that go into making semiconductors are one atom thick. You don't get thinner than one atom. Semiconductors eventually faced a problem where they were really getting to the limits of the physics. In the 1980s, scientists started to think that EUV light might be the best way to get to that atomic level. The US government, through what are called the National Labs, has always been helpful to the semiconductor industry at sort of underwriting some of these fundamental advances. In fact, the Department of Energy ended up putting tens of millions of dollars into EUV research at three labs across the US. To make the jump from research to reality, an alliance was formed with companies including Intel, AMD and Motorola. They'd match any government spending. In 1999, a little-known Dutch lithography company called ASML joined too. Remember that in the 1990s, the Japanese were a major threat to US dominance of the chip industry. The US government threw its weight behind ASML over the Japanese companies who were really leading in photolithography at the time. ASML went all in. They reckoned the tech could be ready commercially by 2006. EV technology is really a moonshot. It was incredibly expensive and incredibly complicated. By 2012, progress had been made, but more was needed. It looked like EUV actually might be possible, but ASML actually needed lots of investment. So they turned to their customers. TSMC, Samsung and Intel decided, wow, this stuff is really important. We better put some billions of dollars behind it to make sure it actually happens. And Intel was the biggest contributor to that. It was really thanks to ASML's stubbornness that they took years and billions in funding to actually produce EUV technology as we know it now. Finally, in 2017, ASML begins shipping the machines in meaningful numbers. But despite the billions of dollars of investment from American companies like Intel and the US government, the first generation of devices all went to TSMC and Samsung. And it wasn't because ASML didn't want to sell machines to Intel. Intel thought that EUV was really important, but like its competitors, they saw the issues with it. That was a decision that they made, and it's a decision that cost them massively. Essentially, the then CEO, Brian Krasanich, didn't think Intel could make EUV work profitably and would be fine without it. 
Intel was the biggest company in town in the industry, dominated the industry for multiple decades. Everybody else was playing catch up. This is the scale at which Intel and TSMC have been able to make chips. Both have consistently got smaller, but with Intel leading the size reduction. Until 2018, when TSMC overtook Intel for the first time. The reason was, at its core, pretty simple. TSMC was making chips with EUV machines, and Intel wasn't. Soon after, Samsung's Galaxy Note 10 smartphone hits the market, the first consumer device featuring chips made with the EUV process. Apple follows, but then there's a problem. Huawei, which was the world's largest smartphone maker at one point, was buying chips from TSMC. The fact that Chinese device makers were making some of the most advanced smartphones caught the attention of the American government. Huawei is something that's very dangerous. You look at what they've done from a security standpoint, from a military standpoint, it's very dangerous. One of the ironies of EUV is that a lot of the underlying technology originated in the United States, but the direct and indirect beneficiaries of that technology haven't really been concentrated in the US. You had a company in mainland China buying chips from a company in Taiwan using equipment made in the Netherlands. This vital cog in the wheel was made by a company in another country, one that they couldn't directly control. So it took a lot of work by Washington to persuade the Dutch not to allow ASML to export EUV to China. The details of how ASML did not ship to China have really been a little bit obscure. All we know is that they state vehemently over and over again, we have never shipped EUV to China. In 2012, Intel was 15 times bigger than NVIDIA and almost twice as big as TSMC. That's when it first invested in ASML. But Intel's failure to move early on EUV has allowed a number of rivals to overtake it. Intel's growth has stalled as TSMC, and especially NVIDIA, have boomed. Intel's leadership team under Krizanich really gave away the keys to the kingdom and that caused a knock-on effect inside Intel. Krizanich left, some of the other leadership was replaced and there was kind of a scramble to get that company back online and one of the conclusions that new leadership came to was we need EUV. We have a very strong partnership with ASML and our plans to now stay on the leading edge of EUV usage are well underway. That's Pat Gelsinger, Intel's current CEO. He's throwing the company's weight behind the next technology. A new, new thing in the world of EUV is called High Numerical Aperture, or High NA EUV. To give you an idea of how important this is, Intel has been loudly touting to anybody who'll listen, they've got the first High NA machine. There's a lot at stake. The US's leadership in semiconductors and the success of President Joe Biden's CHIPS Act, which has set aside $100 billion in subsidies for the semiconductor industry. We will enable advanced semiconductor manufacturing to make a comeback here in America after 40 years. Politicians have finally woken up to how important semiconductors truly are. And Intel's entire plan to turn the company around is predicated on the idea that they can actually get government funding to build semiconductor plants and become a leader again in semiconductor technology.